In today's video, we'll be going over checking the data quality on your APR report. We'll be doing this in a two-part process. One, I'll be going over how to run the HUD data quality report, which is a report built into Client Track. That'll show us what's missing and kind of give us a heads up of things that we can that you can go in and correct. And then two, I'll be going over some practical application of how do we go in and actually make those corrections. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure we are on the Home tab. You can see here in the top left that it says Home. If you don't see that, you can click this icon here. And this will actually let you switch between the different tabs. And once on the Home tab, you can go down to HUD HMIS Reports. Scroll down and see APR 5.1. And here we see our HUD data quality report. You will note there is an HMIS universal data quality report up here. This is an older report. And so as far as for now, if you're wanting to check the data quality on your APR, you are going to want to use this HUD data quality report. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And the first thing we're going to want to do is Input, input the information the same way we would if we were running the actual APR. Now I am running this in the training database so all of the client names you see will just be made up. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to select your program, your grant, It'd be a good idea to go ahead and select your program type, and something that will save you some time in the future, instead of having to, every time you want to go run this data quality report, have to type in all these settings, you can actually use this option here, Save Report Settings. Click Save Settings. Give it a name. And when I do that, when I click the report down here, it's going to run the report, but also it's going to save these settings here. So next time I go to run this report, I can actually just use this drop down here to pull up those settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on report here. And it's going to go ahead and start the process of pulling that information. Now just to give you a heads up, depending on the size of your project, we have seen this take a few minutes. There, were, there was one project I was working with that it literally took five or six minutes for this report to actually come up. So if you're running this report and it seems to just be hanging, just be sure to give it enough time, like I said, to go ahead and, and pull up. So this is the report here. So this is a pretty simple report. And this, this report right here is not going to actually allow us to drill down. And what I mean by that is go in and actually see the, in, the individual information of who's missing data and what specific you know people do we need to go in and correct this just gives you a basic overview of what your data quality is looking like and so it starts off with these this information here this is just the amount of people that kind of qualify for this report in in the different categories and the reason why that's these numbers are important because based on these numbers here and then also the information throughout the report of how many people are missing the information this is where it can give you an error rate then of what's the percentage of people that are missing this information so you can quickly see hey is this a big problem you know is this 73 percent of our people you know have social security number issue or is this just you know one percent so it's just going to be like a few people and so this will just give you a quick overview of that also it breaks down for instance on all of these different areas here all of these different um, data it breaks it down from client doesn't know refused to information is totally missing it was not getting in to data issues and so part of the new data quality report from HUD is actually looking at for instance on social security number it can actually there's some algorithms it used to actually see if it's a bogus social security number so there's, there's a way it can kind of 
help decide if this number is just a made up number or if, it, or if it's an actually real number. And so that's why you might see an issue here for, there's four people with data issues. Well, they, they have social security numbers in there, but something's probably not right with those actual social security numbers. Continuing on, you're gonna see your universal data elements here. This should all be stuff you, that you're used to. This is a pa uh, two page report. So I'm gonna go switch over to the next page. And you're gonna see information on destination, income. It's gonna look both at entry, annual, and exit. You're gonna see all your chronic homelessness questions here. If any of those are missing or Mark just don't know. Timeliness is a little different than all the rest. This is just how long it took you to do an intake or to do an exit from the time that the client actually came in or actually exited your project. So for instance, if a client came in today, enrolled in my project, but I didn't key it in for until 10 days later. So 10 days later I go in and of course I have to backdate it then it would show here that I had a entry that was done between seven and 10 days after the fact. And so it looks at it both for entry and exit. This is something you can't really go in and fix because once you've done something late, you know, there's, you can't go back in time and, and correct that. But this gives you a heads up of like what your, what it's looking like as far as your intake process and your exit process and gives you uh, an idea so that you can say hey you know we are kind of dropping the ball on getting stuff keyed in in a, in a timely manner and we need to, to fix that and then the bottom here in active records this just applies to street outreach and emergency shelter so if you're one of those projects you should be familiar with inactive records and how that works and this just lists those here now while this report can be helpful as I mentioned earlier it actually doesn't give us the individual names and so when we see this information it's great to know something's missing but if we don't know who's missing it then we can't go in and fix it and there's another report within client track you will actually go run to get that detailed information and so at this point I'm going to go in show you guys how to run that report anytime you do have a report pulled up you can minimize it and it will actually go up here to the hidden part there so you can actually and these are some I had pulled up previous so that way instead of exiting out and having to go rerun that report you can just have it there and we can go do something else and then pull that up really easy so the detailed report is going to be we're going to go back to our HUD HMIS reports and at the top here you're going to see APR ESG and DQ detail report and the DQ stands for data quality this is actually going to give us that detailed spreadsheet where we can actually see who's missing what. So this is going to be a very important, helpful report for, for all of you. Again, we're going to use the same information that we would use on the APR. So I'm going to select the same projects I did before. And then I'm going to click Run Export. Now, if you're not familiar with exports and how those work in client track it is a little different than your standard reports so while the previous report we just ran this button down here actually just said run report and after it loaded it you know it automatically popped up for us this is a little different this is actually going to schedule a export of spreadsheets and then we're going to have to go download that from client track and so I'll walk you guys through that so I'm going to click run export I uh, recommend always using encrypt export. Here we just want to include a password on this. This password I would recommend not using your client track password. Reason being, we'll see that in a second, another user from your agency could view what this password is that you're, you're typed in. So for security reasons, do not use your actual client track password. But you do want to remember this password because you're going to need this password when we are able to download this file that we are queuing up right now so that we can actually extract it and view those files. So once we do a password there, we'll click done. And you'll get a little note that says your export has been queued and will be processed at the next available time. 
And what that means is depending on how many other people in the system are running exported reports, it can take a little bit of time. Now, this was one that I had ran earlier here. And so we can actually see this was done today. And this is the APR detail report. This is not the one we just ran. The one we just ran is actually still being queued up. So this section right here is called files on server. To get to it, you can do files on server right here. We'll bring it to you. Now to view the status of reports we've queued up that have not ran yet and have not showed up here, you can click here, click to view, and you'll get a list of all the exports that anybody in your agency has ran. And so we can see these are ones that have completed successfully previous. This one that says not started here, this is the one that we just ran. And so it has not started yet. This will eventually go to processing and then completed successfully. And once it's completed successfully, it will show up here on our list of downloads. A little trick to this page is if you click the little blue action circle and hit view detail, you can see the password that you used to create this with. And that's one reason I was saying don't don't use your actual client track password for security purposes. How this can be helpful though is say you are running some exports and there's a bunch of other people in your agency running exports and so when you you click to view there's a big list of stuff that's all not started and you're not sure which one is yours well if you go here hit, hit view detail and you know what the password you use then i can quickly say okay so this is the one i just queued up and i know this is the one that's mine and then I can also say, well, okay, everyone else has completed successfully, so mine should be getting started sooner. Now, a little caveat to that, you will not see other exports queued up from other agencies. And so if it's a really busy time, there can be other things um, ahead of line uh, that are being queued up. And so sometimes it can be uh, a wait before a file gets done and so commonly I see about 15 to 20 minutes again depending on the size of your project b before an export will actually run and then go ahead and complete so again for training purposes I went ahead and queued this up earlier so we can go straight to this and I can actually show you once one has processed what you see here and so here we see this APR detail report that we have had scheduled to export and if it's listed here then we can click this to download the file and then we can actually hit click this to delete the file. So once we've downloaded it we don't need it anymore we can delete these to just kind of clear up this list. So I'm going to go ahead and cl click download. This might look a little different depending on if you're using Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Chrome. This is Chrome that I'm using, and so Chrome puts the downloads down here in the bottom left. So we can see that this one is now finished downloading. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Show in Folder. It's going to show where I download that to, and I'm going to go ahead and something I like to do is I will copy this. I will right click and hit new folder. We'll call this detailed data quality report. I will go into that folder and I'm going to right click and just paste that report that we just did. Reason I'm going to do this this is going to, when I double click on this, it's going to extract the files that are in this. And so when I do it this way, then it just extracts the files into this folder, which makes them very easy to locate. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. You might, depending on what version of Windows, get a scary message that this is going to break your computer or there's a security vulnerability. Um, I'm going to go ahead and vouch for ClientTrack that we are not going to...
infect your computer with a virus. So you want to go ahead and click on more info here and run anyway. And again, this message might look a little different depending on what version of Windows you're running, but whatever you need to click on to say allow, then you need to do that so it'll go ahead and let you run this. Then you're going to get this window. Here's where we will put that password that we keyed in. So a lot of people have been getting mixed up. They've been putting their client track password here, but then they of course used a different password when they when they went to run this report initially. And so there's been some again confusion there. This is the password we just set up previous. You are going to want to check this. I assume responsibility for the security of the extracted files. It's automatically going to be set here to extract to the folder that this is within. If you wanted to change folders where you want this to extract to, you can do that by clicking this little icon. And then I always just leave up view files after extracting. And you can leave this to if the files already exist, overwrite silently. So I'm going to go ahead and click extract. And here we can actually see those detailed files. And so these are. Excel files that we can pull up and we can actually see the information. These are all the different names. Again, this is all from the training database, which is why we have sun-kissed orange and grape orange uh, clients in here. But this is where we're going to be able to come in here and actually see the details then and and then I'm about to go over actually getting into kind of the nitty gritty of this of what are some of these numbers mean and how can we find missing information. So this first spreadsheet I clicked on which is just called data is kind of the master sheet and so this has all of the clients that are going to be on this report and it's going to have columns representing all the different information so this can kind of be overwhelming looking at this sheet. As you get more used to looking at data, some people find will find this sheet helpful to just pull it up and quickly look at the different columns and find missing data that way. A lot more straightforward way to do that is the individual sheets they have here. And so these are going to represent the represent the different questions that you see throughout that initial report that we ran. So switching back to client track and again because I didn't exit this I can um, pull it up and we can see what we've got here. Here we can start to look at some of this information and then go in and using those detailed sheets see whose information this is. So for instance question two here we know we've got some social security number problems. We've got 24 that have client doesn't know or refuse. we got two with missing information and then we have four with data quality issues. So this is question two. So I'm going to go to those detailed spreadsheets that we have and I'm going to go to DQ2 and here it's going to go ahead and list those specific data quality issues. So we can see these we can see here in column A these are also security number issues. We can see the client ID number here, client name, and then in these columns what's actually wrong with the data. So this should total to 24. We can see it does. So th those are 24 people that have don't knows, the two people that have missing, and then the four people that have data issues with the social security numbers. And then what we can do from here is we can just grab that client ID, copy that. We're going to go back to client track, minimize this, hit paste, go ahead and do a search here. And there's my person. Pull them up. For any um, client information such as social security number, that kind of thing, you can click on edit client here yep we can see here client does not know social so if I had that I could go ahead and key that in here and go ahead and save that 
depending on the security setup the on that particular client maybe if that if that was a client that was from migration and you haven't got to be able to set that to shared MOU under the information release if that's the case when you go to edit client you might not see all that information here where you can actually fill that in what you can do in those cases if they have an open enrollment you can do edit enrollment workflow here and then you would be able to see the whole all the clients information here and go ahead and correct it there click finish once that information's in there and then go ahead and cancel the workflow since we've already made the corrections so for following that same logic using this report you can find your errors and then go to the detailed so let's do question three here universal data elements we can see someone has disabling condition missing there's error there so we're going to go over look at Q3 at DQ3 there's the two people there let's pull up one of those for disabling condition you should be able to get through that through edit client as well so this is an interesting one so it said there was a problem here it says an error with disabling condition and then through the detailed report we were able to see well it's showing this person here has a dis, uh, disabling condition issue which is why it's showing on this this um, spreadsheet right here possibility for that would be we see that they have disabling condition is no but if we look at their enrollment and this is the project we're running this for I'm going to click on that hit review entry assessments this is where you can go in and view the individual assessments that were done on this for this enrollment I'm going to click HMIS barriers aha uh -huh. and it says they do have a barrier here we have this mental health this condition is indefinite, so this person should be listed as disabled. However, they are not. So that's where you get into. It's a little more complicated than just missing information or that you know client doesn't know being put in. But also, it's going to look for issues like this. So to fix this, if we're saying okay, this person does have a mental health disability, then we would go in we need to change this to be yes go ahead and click finish now um, we can go back in and instead of having to do that full export which we know takes takes some time we can just shoot over here run this data quality report again we saved our settings so we can just pull that up hit report now we should only be showing one person has missing disability information or has data quality problems with disability. So let's scroll down here. Yep. Boom. Only one person now. So using that kind of uh, idea, you can go through this. You can look through your spreadsheets look through compare with this then pull up the client and fix information some of these will be real simple like this you might run into some more complicated issues I can't go over every possible scenario of incorrect data but it's gonna be one of those things that as you continue to run APRs find find problems you'll kind of learn that something we just ran into with some migrated data we had name up here we had um, data quality issues and what that was was the 
first name and the last name were both already recorded in the system, but in HMIS, and let me pull up a client's detailed information, you have this field right here, name quality, which when you do an, when you do an intake in client track, this automatically populates. If it has if you do a first name and last name, this automatically goes to full name reported. Well, some of the migrated data we that was migrated into the system had first name and had and had last name, but did not already have this filled out for it. So it's missing name quality. And so you will see that when you run that data quality report, if you see anybody that have that has name issues, that's normally the case. Where, where it gets a little confusing is when you go in to edit that client to correct them, you're actually not going to see a blank here. You're actually going to see full name reported. What's going on though is when you when you pull up this edit client form, that's when the form's logic goes ahead and kicks in and says, oh, we see a first name, last name, so we're going to set that as full name reported. So what that means for you is it's just, to fix that issue, it's as simple as pulling up the client, go to edit client, verify that full name reported there is there, and then click finish. When you do that, it's going to go ahead and then correct that issue. So we just had some people confused by going in they say hey I'm going in and correcting it but it's already showing that it's there well it's not really there it just automatically pops up when you pull up that form if that makes sense so again to correct demographic type information edit client is your friend that's what you that's where you want to go other assessments you can the easiest way is to click review entry assessments and then you can go into those individual assessments there make the changes hit save you can also if the client has an open enrollment so if they have not already been exited you can do edit enrollment workflow that will walk you through the whole thing so if you've got a lot of information to correct on a particular client sometimes this can be helpful because this will just kind of go through the whole enrollment steps with you allowing you to make the changes you need to make and then now of course when you're doing an intake we always tell people like you know always go all the way through it until you get to the finish however when you're going in making changes on a pre-existing enrollment you can go through this make the changes you need to make so say this is actually needs to be there make that change once the changes have been made that you need to there's really no point to continue to go all the way through so you can actually just cancel the workflow here so that's kind of a overview again of accessing the tools you need to look at your data quality for your APR and then how those correlate to actually going in and fixing client so Good luck on all your APR data quality issues. Uh, as always, um, do not hesitate to submit issues if you are having a problem or maybe there's a real specific data quality issue that you're not sure how to fix. Definitely submit that in a ticket and then we can address that. Thank you so much.